Hey, can we get into this camera quality? Because oh, you look great. And you're making me look great. So thank you for this. I'm excited for you. Wow, this is going to be fun, guys. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. My name is Trisha and I'm a full-time model signed to New York City. So I've been gone for three weeks and I don't have an excuse for it, but I'm back and that is all that matters. But I have an update for you. I got my license. For those who don't know, I quite literally avoided getting my license since I was about 18 years old. The reason being, I just refused to become my family's chauffeur because that's what happened with my siblings. Just my little sister. I'm you know, a passenger princess. I didn't really care to be behind the wheel. I really don't care to drive people around. But I will say, now that I have my license, the world has really opened up for me. I can do so much more. I can go where I want to go. I can leave when I want to leave. And I get it. I get it. I get it. So now I have it so everyone can leave me alone. That's quite literally my only update. So let's get into this video. Today I want to talk about the things I think that you should know before getting into this industry. If you're thinking about becoming a model, if you know someone who's thinking about becoming a model, if you're a new face and you're just beginning in the industry and don't really know too much, just come on in. Come on in. I'm going to let you know all the things you need to know before you really go for it. So that you're prepared, you're ready, and then you can just take this industry by storm. The first thing that you need to know before getting into this industry is your why. Why do you want to become a model? Why do you want to be in this industry in the first place? We've heard all the horror stories about the modeling industry. Why do you want to do it? And the reason that this is so important is because those horror stories, you know, they don't come from nowhere. This is really a cutthroat industry. It really is. It can be really tough on your mental health, on your physical health, if you're not safe and if you're not supported and protected in the right ways. It can really be a lot. So you need to know the reason that you're doing this so that when things do get tough, you can always come back to that and kind of like reground yourself in that reason and then continue to move forward towards your goals. So you need to have your why. The second thing that you need to do is your research. Unless you don't have access to the internet, which, you know, you might not. But there really is an excuse as to why you shouldn't be at least a little knowledgeable coming into this industry. Honestly, that should go for any industry. So one thing you should be researching is what type of model do you want to be? There's so many different types of modeling within, in the industry. There's beauty, there's fitness, there's feature modeling, which would be like hands and feet. You know, there's... There's commercial, there's high fashion, there's so many different types of modeling and you need to know what type of modeling you want to be doing once you enter the industry so that you can have a clearer path. You're not just winging it and just taking what comes to you, you'll, you'll be directing yourself and have your agent directing you in a certain direction. You should be doing research on the clients that you would want to work for. See the type of girls that they work with, the type of shoes that they do so that you can start maybe working on certain poses and working on certain facial expressions and doing that type of stuff at home to prepare yourself so that when you're in that room and you're in that space, you already have an idea of what they would want and it will better your chances of securing that job. This is also really good for girls who are already in the industry and have already started working and are going on castings and things like that. When you're going on castings, it's so important that you research the client that you're going on the casting for. If you're going on a casting, it's good to research and see on their social media page, on their campaigns, what type of girls do they like? What, what type of styles do they like your hair to be in? So you can maybe go in with that hairstyle and they'll be like, oh, like we've done that before, it looks good on her. What type of like fitted clothes do they wear? Is it usually like loose and flowy or is it tighter? Maybe you can dress or style yourself in that way for that casting to again, better your chances. You need to do your research on agencies. There are so many scammers. It's like honestly like ridiculous. And so many agencies who are preying on girls and boys who wanna be in the industry but don't really know much. And so they're just targeting them and making them pay a bunch of fees and for this and that and that honestly really isn't the case once you become signed like there's fees within the agency but you're, you don't pay to get signed like that's not how that works but i can get into like once you're signed what happens in a different video but do your research on the agencies that are reputable in your neighborhood and you can easily do that on models.com models.com literally has absolutely everything that you could need when you're starting out. As every reputable agency in major cities and smaller cities, different countries, so that you know if someone's reaching out to you, you can just go right on there and be like, hmm, is this even legit? And you'll know right from there. So do your research, do your research, and do your research. <laughs> the third thing that you need to know before you become a model is model staples that you should have in your closet at all times. 
you need to have fitted jeans, whether it's black or blue. You need to have fitted tops, whether, whether it's white or black or just like a neutral color. And you need to have heels. Again, heels could be like a little specific to the type of modeling that you want to do. But if you're looking to do like high fashion editorial work, you need to have heels and you need to know how to walk in heels. So if you're just thinking about coming into the industry or if you've started and you're still like not really comfortable in heels, I think it's smart and safe to just buy a pair of heels. It could be a cheap pair of heels. Pumps booties with like a skinnier heel um is good even like a thicker heel sometimes but i think it's always safer just to do a skinnier heel because you don't know what clients are going to put you in when you get a job so <laughs> just practicing and becoming comfortable in a stiletto heel walking back and forth in your house and just becoming comfortable in that will really prepare you for when you go for these castings and for when you book these jobs and honestly i've noticed like there are castings that you go in and girls are in sneakers or in cool boots like flatter boots or in like you know baggy jeans and cool tops but it really just depends on the client but like if you're again if you're looking to do high fashion modeling when fashion week comes you're in heels like you're walking and the casting's in heels and more often than not you're doing the show in heels so just be comfortable in heels so that when it comes up because it is inevitable when you become a model so just make sure that you're comfortable in them okay the fourth thing that you need to know before you come into this industry is that this is not the space to come and think this is a get rich quick type of situation that's not what's gonna happen because the reality is once you're signed the standard is 30 to 90 days from the day of the job to get paid that's a month to three months <laughs> before you see that money for that job so you should not be coming into this industry thinking oh I'm gonna do this really big campaign and get paid immediately and I'm gonna be so rich and it's gonna be amazing that is not the reality for the majority of models in this industry Yes, there are some clients who, you know, are just really great and will pay the model sooner than later. But you also have to realize, well, you may not know this, but the money goes from the client to your agency and then your agent pays you out after they take their percentage. So don't expect to come into this and get this money right off rip. It's not going to happen like that. You're going to be really disappointed and really stressed out if you're, you know, depending on this one job for bills you might have because you're not seeing that money for a while. So you need to be prepared for that. Whether that's if you need to get a second job, if you have a job and you're thinking about modeling, have a cushion for yourself so that you're not stressed and stranded and struggling when your bills come around because you can't afford it and you don't have the money for it because you were hoping that the check would come through for this job. I'm telling you now, if you're going the signed route for modeling, because of course it's freelancing too and you can negotiate different things with that, but I'm not a freelance model so I can't speak to that. But <laughs> if you're going the signed model route and you're looking to get signed, the standard pay is 30 to 90 days. There are organizations like the Model Alliance who are working to amend that and kind of just give models a little bit more rights when it comes to payment and things like that and contracts and whatnot. But as of now, 30 to 90 days. Don't be doing anything banking on the money from a certain job because you don't know within that when within that time frame that money's coming in. So think about that before you come into this. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is not something that, you know, happens overnight. There's some cases that it says that, but like the exposure can happen overnight, but the pay isn't happening overnight. So just prepare for that and make sure that you're aware of that coming into this so that you can manage your expectations when it comes to your finances. The fifth thing that you need to know before coming into this industry is social media. I have been signed now for almost two years. I make two years in December and I have not had a single casting whether that be a virtual casting, a submission, like I'm making a video at home and sending it in, or an in-person casting where they have not asked for my social media, whether that's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, what have you. Social media is, it's the standard at this point. Like, it is super important. It's like your second portfolio. And clients are looking at that. Agencies are looking at that. So if you don't have a social media, I would suggest you get one. It's honestly something that I'm trying to work on. I'm not very consistent on like Instagram and TikTok. And as you know, I have been gone for three weeks here. Shh. But I'm trying to get consistent because it is very important. And clients look at that. They like to see what you do in your daily life. They like to see who you are outside of modeling. And it kind of is a great way to give them an inside look into your other interests besides modeling. So if you have social media and it's looking a little... Eh? I would, you know, clean it up a little bit. <laughs> if there are things that you wouldn't want clients to see, maybe clean it up. You know, maybe switch some things around, maybe archive some things. Or maybe moving forward, post things that would make you seem more appealing to clients. Whether that's hobbies, whether that things like selfies, like no filters, clean face, no makeup, like things like that are even great to have on your social media pages so that 
clients can kind of see like the authentic you. Keep that in mind. If you're not comfortable with social media, get comfortable with it. If you have social media already and it may not be what you want to present yourself as, which should always be your authentic self. Like don't present yourself as someone that you're not. But if your social media page isn't maybe highlighting the best parts of yourself per se, consider changing and shifting it up a little bit just so you can put your best foot forward when clients and agencies are looking at it because they are looking at it. <laughs> The sixth thing that you need to know before coming into this industry is who you are as a person. It is extremely important to know who you are because this industry is surrounded by people who want to influence you, whether that is in a positive way or a negative way. And if you don't know who you are and you don't know what you stand for and you don't know what makes you you, it's very easy to become influenced and kind of be turned into someone that you're not. And by being your most authentic self, learning who that is, first of all, maybe you're young, you're not sure who you are yet, but you'll get there. But have an idea, you know, like, you know, the things you like, you know, the things that you're into, you know, the things that, you know, make you uncomfortable. I feel like there's no one that knows you better than you. And so you shouldn't allow anyone or anything, including this industry, change that or change you. So you need to know who you are because the reality is there's a lot of rejection. There is so much rejection in this industry. And if you're not confident in who you are, if you're not sure in who you are as a person, that will get to you in 2.5 seconds and you just will not last. You just won't last. Like, the rejection in this industry is consistent. <laughs> it's just a reality of it. And you need to be mentally prepared for that, emotionally prepared for that, and make sure that you're strong enough to withstand that. And the thing is, if you are sure enough in yourself, you know who you are, you know that you're beautiful inside and out, you know that you're strong, you know that you have value, you know that what you have to offer is unique, and it's unique because it's you, rejections won't phase you. It may sting for a second, but it's not going to last, because you know that someone will come along and will see the same value and worth that you see and know within yourself, and they'll book you off that alone, off the strength of who you are, your personality, how you present yourself, you'll be booked off that alone. So you just need to stay rooted in who you are as a person because you don't want rejections and influences negative influences to be specific to come and put you in a bad mental emotional space because that is also pretty normal this is an industry that is judging you on how you look that that's what it is that's what we do you go to castings they look at you they have you turn profile like they look at you and they judge you is what it is so if you're not confident and sure of who you are that will get to you very easily and it can be very detrimental to your mental health. So you need to know who you are. And if you don't know who you are yet, get to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Find out things that you like. Find out what your triggers may be. Find out how to, you know, soothe those triggers. Just find out who you are. Get to know who you are. Stay rooted in who you are. And you can survive this industry. And the last thing that I think you need to know before you get into this industry, which I think piggybacks off of the last thing, are your boundaries. You need to know the things that you will absolutely not do because, again, influence in this industry is very big, especially for new models and especially for young models. You need to know your boundaries. You need to know what you absolutely will not do, that you will not budge on no matter who is asking you to do it, no matter who is telling you about it. If you know who you are and you know that this is something that you already told yourself that you will not do, then don't do it. Don't budge. Don't change your mind because you see a bunch of other people doing it, girls or guys. If you know this is something that you will not do and you're not comfortable doing, stand strong on that because there will be people and clients who try to push you and if you don't have your boundaries set, you're not strong and confident in your boundaries and, you know, verbalizing them, vocalizing them, you will get challenged. And even if you are strong in those boundaries, you're going to get challenged. But if you're confident in them and confident in speaking up for yourself, they can't make you budge. Like, you can't be forced to do something that you don't want to do. So have your boundaries and stick to them. For my black models out there, if you're not comfortable with people coming in with flat irons and whatnot in your hair, say that. I'm very vocal with that, so say that. <laughs> if you're not comfortable, you know, doing a shoot that is nude or half nude or topless, say that. If you're, you know, maybe you came in initially and you were comfortable with it, but now you've been topless for two hours and you're over it and you're no longer comfortable, speak up and say that and ask for a top, ask for a jacket. I've done that before. My camera got too hot. I need a second to cool down. But you agree to do a shoot that's semi-nude. So maybe that's just like topless or something like that. If you're going through the shoot and you now realize that you're uncomfortable, if someone or something is now making you uncomfortable, speak up. Like I've been on a shoot before and, you know, we were doing some shoots with just a blazer, nothing, under nothing underneath. And I was completely comfortable in the beginning. But now two hours have gone by and somehow I'm still 
topless like it just wasn't making sense i feel like we had gotten the shot a while ago now i just feel like i'm here shooting with my buddies out for no reason so i said that and we changed you know we changed looks like it shouldn't be a problem and if it is a problem then you know that you don't want to work with those people again so have your boundaries stick to your boundaries and it will make it very difficult for people to try to manipulate and influence you to do things that you're not comfortable with so yeah those are seven things that I think that you need to know before coming into this industry. I think they're very important. And of course, there are plenty of more things that you need to know before getting into this industry. But I think that if you start here, you'll be in a pretty good place. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any more questions on modeling, on, I don't know, living in New York City, on being a black model, on being anything really if you have any questions you just want to talk to me and chat you know leave a comment <laughs> you can dm me on instagram um i'm on tiktok too you can reach out there and i'm going to be more consistent i was really honestly i was consistent let me not be hard on myself i have a tendency to do that i was consistent i took three weeks off because i was i was doing some things okay that's just what it was i was also waiting on my camera to get here so there's that too so if you have any questions, comments, things you want to share, any concerns with your journey, with anything really, things you want me to post more and see more of, feel free to leave a comment below. I appreciate your likes as well, and of course subscribe so you can be notified when I post a new video. So this was honestly a really fun video for me to make. I'm excited to continue making videos for you, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye! Thank you.